What's up, everybody? Man, it's your boy, Mr. Duga, coming at y'all with another episode of Dropping Dimes with Mr. Duga. And hey, tonight, man, um, I'm going to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, game six of the NBA Finals as you have the Milwaukee Bucks beating the Phoenix Suns 105 to 98 to win their first NBA championship in 50 years. And Giannis Antetokounmpo wins finals MVP after putting up 50 points tonight. Um, Before I get into this video, for everyone, if you want to give me a follow on my social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, I'm going to have all that information down in the description box. Also, if you are Madden, player uh, on xbox one i'm gonna have my gamma tag also down in the description box may not always get a chance to um respond to questions and comments on these videos uh so feel free to dm me whenever i get a chance to so i'll get back at you uh come out at your bar yo man uh first i'm gonna start off with the game and then i'm gonna talk about you know the Bucks and Giannis and all that. And uh, honestly, I actually owe Giannis an apology later in this video, which I'll get to. Uh, man, good game. First off, good basketball game. Really good basketball game. Very competitive. Uh, two teams who clearly wanted to win this game. The uh, Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis just just put the Bucks on his back. He scored nearly half the points. <laughs> like. You know, Middleton didn't really give him a lot, a lot until late when he hit down some some crucial buckets like he's done all playoffs. Trust me, as a Heat fan, I remember the game one against them, you know, the game winner, you know, so Giannis was just absolutely sensational. And it wasn't just him getting 50 points. It was the manner in which he did it. He was like, what? I don't know the exact numbers, but I know at one point he was like 15 for 16 at the line. I think he missed like two free throws all night long. A guy who struggled all playoffs at the free throw line, got the people counting the 10, you know, trying to disrupt his rhythm. And for him to make his free throws when it counted the most, when his team needed every last one of those makes, he came through like a true champion, like a true MVP, and he got it done. He took it home for them. Uh, Drew Holiday didn't have a great shooting night, but, you know, he made a couple of critical baskets, and his defense was just tenacious, yo, coming up with timely steals and timely turnovers. Uh, Brooke Lopez gave him some good minutes, like crucial big-time dunk, you know, he had like, like early in the fourth quarter. That really got the crowd going. Um, Connaughton was out there, you know, hustling, made some hustle plays. P.J. Tucker played solid defense. But <laughs> how about Milwaukee Bucks crowd favorite? Bobby Portis had, I think, like 16 points off the bench. Very efficient shooting. And not it wasn't just his scoring. He also brings a level of energy to the Milwaukee Bucks that that really helped them push through. Um, Bobby Portis was just absolutely sensational tonight. Um, big, big time performance when uh, the team needed it, yo. Uh, so you just got to give the Bucks credit, man. They, you know, it's their time. You know, they've been knocking on the door, uh, had the best record in the league a couple of years ago, was up two on Toronto, and Kawhi and Toronto came back, took full straight. Last year, we all know what my Heat did to them in the bubbles, knocked them out in five. And you got to give credit also to their general manager. Uh, they improved their basketball team. And I, you, as a Heat fan, I've seen that in round one. Honestly, coming into the series, I liked my Heat chances against them just because, uh, you know, I liked how we match up. And I remember we did them last year. <laughs> but that team got better. Like, you add Drew Holiday um, a veteran guy that could score buckets, but also play great perimeter defense. You add a guy like a, a, a veteran like P.J. Tucker who could defend and hit corner threes. You add a guy like Bobby Portis who could hit the three and just bring you, you know, great, great energy. Um, Forbes, though, he didn't do much in the finals, but trust me, against my heat, a guy who is capable of getting extremely hot, you know, from the three-point line and, and, and really filling it in from three. You know, they, they improved their basketball team. And, you know, boot, boot, um, Coach Bud, like, 
you know, coming into the playoffs, there was reports that he was on the hot seat, that if the Bucks didn't make a nice run, his job may be in jeopardy. Well, I'm pretty sure his job is pretty safe now. <laughs> like, with the job that him and his coaching staff did uh, to bring this thing home, you know, they, you know, you get a little bit of fortune, but that comes with all the champs. You know, you think about Durant, if you just a little bit back, it, it, they probably would have been knocked out. But to their credit, to be on the road and then go into that overtime and, and, and get it done, Game 7 in Brooklyn, that's championship pedigree, yo. Uh, against Atlanta, with Giannis being out, Game five and game six, and for them to step up and win those games, you know, pretty handily. That's that's championship, you know, pedigree. That that's championship spirit, yo. Um, and in these this series, down two zero on the road, down two zero to Phoenix. Game four coming down to the wire, and to go on the road in Phoenix, down sixteen after the first quarter. You know, and Phoenix getting on a massive run in the fort, and for them to pull that out. And tonight, Phoenix, you know, Phoenix didn't lay down. You got to give a lot of credit to Marty Williams and Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and those guys. They didn't lay down at all, and they didn't make it easy for Milwaukee. But Milwaukee dug deep, and they, they got it done. They pulled it out in the end. So, shout out to the Milwaukee Bucks, yo. Just real, real championship pedigree. Um, Way to do their thing. Uh, real quick on the Phoenix Suns spectacular run. Look, ain't nobody, I don't care if it's the most diehard Phoenix Suns fan, cannot say before this season started that the Suns would make the NBA Finals. Nobody seen that. I mean, a lot of people felt like the Suns would have went out in the first round, you know, against the Los Angeles Lakers. They were down 2-1 against the Lakers with game four at Staples Center. And for them to get through that series and to sweep the Nuggets, and to get through a pesky Clippers team, missing Chris Paul game one and game two. And they had a tool. They had their chances, yo. They had they had them. Like, they had Milwaukee. They were up 2-0, and they, they just let it get away. Um, I know Chris Paul is a veteran, and obviously Jay Crowder is a veteran. But a lot of their core players are young, yo. And this is something that's, you know, going to stick with them. And it's something that's going to push them to get even better. Uh, particularly, you know, DeAndre Ayton, man. I felt like he was a no-show tonight. He he played extremely soft on both ends. You know, there's times where he had chances to go up, finish strong, and he didn't. And defensively, he just let Giannis kind of just kind of just bully him around. So, um, but he's a young player, a lot, a lot of talent. He's gonna be all right. Booker is a is a superstar in this league. You know, you would think he only going to get better and better. Um, we're going to see what's the deal with Chris Paul. You feel for him. You know, he came so close to finally getting that elusive ring to fall short. But, you know, he showed people that he still could get it done. And obviously, Monty Williams gets a lot of respect for the job that he's done, you know, with the Phoenix Sun organization, getting them to this point. So, Phoenix, you know, you think teams in the West would get a little better. But obviously, Phoenix is still in that mix also. Um, they bring all a lot of these guys back. Mikel Bridges and Johnson and, you know, Aiden Booker, um, a lot of these guys, yo. This is a very, very young, talented team. So, you know, you got to be on the lookout for them in the West in the future. Um, And one more thing I have to do before I end this video. I'm a fair guy. I, I say a lot of things, obviously. You know, I, a lot of things I'm right on, but there's things that I'm wrong on. And one of those things that I was wrong on was about Giannis staying in Milwaukee. Look, as a Miami Heat fan, before the after last season in the bubble and before this season started, it was a lot of talk that Giannis would potentially join the Miami Heat following this season. And then he decides to sign a five-year extension with the, a max deal with the Milwaukee Bucks. And at the time, I'm going to be honest, I was very critical of that. I felt like Giannis didn't really push himself to win like like i'm like bro you're not gonna win in milwaukee you need to come to miami join up with with jimmy join up with bam and this organization with pat riley and being coached by spo not granted we still got a great organization <laughs> you know i'm not saying that but i felt like his best chance at a title was to join the miami heat and where i gotta give Giannis credit is in a day and age where you have a lot of stars that you know, move around, that they don't stay with the team that drafted them or the team that they come up with. 
you know, eventually they move around to either play with other stars or to go to bigger markets and try to bring championships to those already rich, fulfilled places. Giannis stayed in Milwaukee, yo, and in the first year after that, he wins the NBA championship. I got I to gotta apologize to Giannis. Um, I apologize. I thought you made a bad decision, but little shows what I know. <laughs> like shows what a lot of people know, you know, you, you follow, he, he was, he's loyal to that organization. You know, he was loyal and his loyalty paid off tonight, not only with him winning an NBA championship, but him closing the deal, getting 50 points and shooting great at the free throw line, regardless how much he struggles at the line, he still puts his head down and he's still aggressive. He's still going, drawing fouls. And he doesn't, and, and, and of course he had the 50 points, but he also had five blocks tonight. And he does it on both ends. He goes on the other end, he guards Chris Paul. He guards Devin Booker. And he blocks shots. He rebounds. He, he runs the floor. I mean, he is a complete player. If he just could fix his jump shot a little bit he, and, and, and post up a little more, he would be completely, completely, completely unguardable. But even with the flaws in this game, he still... You know, he goes get it, and I'm I'm happy for him, and he deserves, absolutely deserves to be an NBA champion tonight. I tip my hat to Giannis, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo for sticking it out, being loyal to the organization that been loyal to you, and you got blessed tonight and rewarded with an NBA title and a finals MVP. Tip my cap to you. Salute to you, my brother. Uh, but with that being said, that's all I got for y'all tonight. Appreciate y'all checking out the video. Hit the like button for your boy. Give me a subscribe. I have Miami Heat and NBA content throughout the year. Also, um, this coming Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. I'm going to do an hour-long Q&A. Y'all come on there, ask me anything, tell me anything. I'll answer your questions, respond to your comments, and give you a shout-out on the live. Uh, also, uh, on, on Sunday at 11, uh, 10 a.m. Central, to, to 12 noon central our whole co-host big time sports talk on the radio um download the espn 1420 a.m app um and come listen to big time sports talk with me and mike the band it should be a lot of fun until then y'all have a blessed one let's go heat congratulations milwaukee bucks 2021 nba champs